Hi everybody and welcome back to uh, the DTWF uh, YouTube channel. Uh, normally I don't get much mail uh, for the channel in web. Um, what I show in uh, these videos are my own hardware and sometimes um, other people that send me something to repair. But this time uh, I received a nice gift from uh, Jeff Bert. He is a uh, YouTube creator too, has a nice uh, channel, uh, Hey Bert, link is in the description. Um, the, he sent me uh, something interesting. So let's see what we find inside. We recently made a MOS 8501 replacement chip, uh, improving uh, my own design. So first thing we have uh, completed the 8501 replacement, which is a much better uh, improvement uh, from my design because it, uh, it added um, a little gate uh, to automatically switch between PAL and, and TSC uh, based on the uh, jumper on the C64 uh, motherboard and uh, he also used these bent pins he designed uh, to allow the um, the chip to to reside between the two uh, pin strips, the two pin, uh, because the this SMD chip is uh, a bit too large to fit um, between normal uh, 300 mils uh, spacing. So he designed a, a jig to bend the pins and install them uh, uh, to be soldered easily which is a very nice uh, realization and be sure to check his video about uh, all the design process uh, and also he shows how to build uh, the, the whole uh, uh, this whole uh, replacement uh, all the chips uh, and the pins uh, how to bend them and everything link is the description as always then also Jeff sent me uh, a bare PCB ready to be populated sent me capacitor resistors uh, and even the, the chips to populate uh, the pcb and even the pins that are, that are really bent in, uh, in the right shape let me show that really really nice very good job here is a one of the pin strips with uh, the band, the band that uh, allow the uh, this uh, spacing uh, to be uh, larger enough to fit the the SMD chip and still uh, fit in the normal uh, 300 mils uh, deep sides. Oh, just by comparison, this is my own uh, PCB where I don't have uh, through all pins I have just the pads on the bottom part that uh, need the uh, um, SMD pin strips that are not very easy to come by uh, actually almost uh, impossible so it's not a very good design by comparison the Jeff one is uh, really nice so again, be sure to check his video where he shows uh, how to bend the pins and to make uh, uh, the complete uh, the complete assembly of this uh, nice uh, MOS 8701 SMD replacement. And uh, also, this one is uh, auto sensing that 
it goes on uh, NTSC or PAL motherboards without any kind of configuration needed because it just senses the jumper on the motherboard. Uh, the last item that Jeff sent to me is this other one. And this strange thing is actually a test fixture to test the resistance of all the keyboard uh, contact uh, stems that have that uh, conductive rubber on the inferior part and this can test the C64 and Amiga keys this test feature is uh, featured on another um, Jeff uh, Hebert uh, video that is linked in the description and uh, it, it allows to measure the actual resistance of the rubber and if it's too high uh, you don't have to assemble the whole keyboard to discover that some uh, keys don't, don't uh, work well and actually in the same video uh, Jeff developed a method to revive uh, uh, to restore the conductivity on that uh, on, on a Amiga keyboard that was not functional so it may be of great help so be sure to check the video I will build this uh, fixture myself um, it's assembled it's very simple uh, there are only two wires to be soldered in, uh, in the PCB here and just the screws to hold the PCB against this uh, plastic uh, piece with uh, the right uh, uh, hole uh, shape for the C64 keys uh, and the Mega keys. I will demonstrate with um, C64 keyboard. So let me solder the wire and stuff. Okay, so, so I built the test fixture connected uh, to a multimeter and also here I have um, some C64 keyboard stems that are mostly broken, there is a good one but uh, missing a key. Anyway, how it works, the stem goes into the right place and we can measure on the multimeter the the contact um, yeah okay this is the about one and 100 ohms then let's try another one yeah more or less 100 ohm this one too and the third one yeah, almost the same, more or less 100 ohms. But I have a better idea to test uh, keys with this text feature. Let's see what I'm thinking. The circuit in this image is a simple two transistor voltage comparator. The LED turns on when the voltage on the left transistor base is lower than the voltage on the right transistor base, which in this case is held constant by a fixed resistor divider. By cleverly choosing the resistor's values, we can set a turn-off resistance of approximately 750 ohms. So the LED will be on if we test a key with a low enough resistance or remain off if the key resistance is higher than the threshold. Of course, a similar circuit could be built with an integrated comparator chip, but I happen to like very much transistor-based circuits. So, I quickly made the circuit into a breadboard uh, and in place of the case switch I'm uh, using a little trimmer at this moment so I can uh, uh, change the resistance and see when the, the circuit uh, detects a good or bad uh, situation so let's power on ok it's a bit dim but the LED is uh, at the moment is lit so if I change the 
prima value audio ok extinguish on off on off it just uh, takes to measure at what resistance is going off uh, the LED uh, the green means uh, it, the resistance is lower when it goes off the resistance is higher so let's measure at what value of resistance it just extinguish like this and see what we find So the streamer is measuring at the moment uh, 773 ohms, which is a good value. What uh, about what uh, uh, Jeff found on this uh, on his uh, uh, video and the research? So I say the circuit is working uh, uh, well enough. So now how could uh, my test circuit? Uh, to the text fixture as the schematic uh, and of course I know the keys are good and I hope you can see the LED getting on when I press the key let's zoom on it yeah you see it of course when there is no key there is no LED action let's try another one yeah but it's always the same works uh, as we expected since we tested them with a multimeter and the circuit is calibrated to a threshold of about 750 ohms so 100 ohms is very low and uh, of course it, it indicates that the key is good so in principle one could build this simple circuit in a small board and uh, uh, put uh, together with this text fixture and the 9 volt batteries maybe changing some small resistor values uh, with 9 volt battery but yeah it could be a good test fixture just it doesn't even require um, a multimeter or to test um, if a key steam is good or not so this is all for this short video and thank you Jeff again for all the nice presents and uh, if you have any questions leave in the comments below and uh, we'll see you next time uh, thank you for watching